all were reading uh, How to Twist a Dragon Tail and we're about to find out who the man on the white dragon is. Good. The man got down from his white dragon and with both hands he, yes, he's taking off his fire suit. I'll take it off and then you'll see. This is the man who just rescued Hiccup from the fire. The man got down from his white dragon and with both hands he pulled up the head section of the suit he was wearing. It was stuck very tight and made rather revolting squelchy burpy noise as he peeled it, up, it off. There you see, said the man triumphantly, as with a final rude belch he detached the head gear from his face. I'm not a love of loud, Sturt walked slowly around around the man. The head that he revealed was clearly not the head of a love lad. It was the head of a blonde bearded handsome man. No, made that a very handsome man, slightly past the prime of middle age, perhaps. And currently looking a little bit cross. I'm not surprised. I mean, you go to the trouble of rescuing somebody's son and then they try and kill you because they think you're a lover lad. I mean, who are these people? Very unreasonable. Star Stoic put his sword back in his scabbard. Not a lava lad, pronounced Stoic with relief. Well, I think they should have been. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> I should get on with the story. But if not a lava lad, then who are you? Who are you? The man looked extremely surprised. What do you mean, who am I? said the man. I'm humongously hotshot, of course. Humongously hotshot was one of the greatest keeps humongously hotshot the hero. Humongously hotshot was one of the greatest Viking heroes of recent times who had completed such great quests as the slaying of the rude rippers and the fetching of the weird stone. Mm. He had completely disappeared without trace 15 years before and everybody rather assumed he was dead, which was an occupational hazard of being a Viking hero. No, not homongously hotshot the hero, stammered Stoic the Vast in awe. Suddenly Stoic was rather aware of the fact he was standing in front of one of the greatest heroes of the Viking Age, dressed only in a pair of hairy knickers and one rather ancient blue sock. He sucked in his tummy and tried to look his most dignified and cheaply. But, but we all thought you were dead. Yes, well, said Humongous, frowning bitterly. I was on this hero quest in uh, Lava Lab territories and I got caught red-handed by those snakes in helmets, the Lava Labs. They, oh, so everybody doesn't like the Lava Labs. They slung me into one of their jail forges and so I spent the last 15 years underground forging swords for them, which is why I'm wearing one of their Lava Lab far suits. It's made out of dragon skin, which means it's totally fireproof. Mm, they're evilly, well they won't be totally fireproof, mostly fireproof. They're evilly clever, those lava lights said so at the last shaking kid's head. How by the great hairy thumbnails of Thor did you ever escape? Oh, I didn't escape, exclaimed her, um, Humongous. Nobody escaped from the lava lights. Uh, they evacuated the island. The exterminators were hatching. Our extermi what's it? Whatever you said, said Stoic. I've never heard of them before. Exterminators are the creatures who made this little mess here, explained explained um, Humongous, waving a hand at the scene of scorched devastation and fiery chaos behind him. They haven't got, I mean, seen around these parts for centuries because their eggs can only be hatched by the gases and lava given off by an exploding volcano. The volcano on Lava Lived Island has been grumbling away for a while now, getting ready for a really massive explosion. And when it does, all the exterminator eggs will hatch. So you're saying they were exterminators that attacked us right just now, said Hiccup. That's right, I'd say about six more ones, baby exterminators, you know. They were quite sweet, really. <laughs> it answered Humongous cheerily. And how many exterminators eggs... Uh, eggs are there left on Lava Light Island? So take up good question. Oh, no more than about 900,000, I'd say. <laughs> Not it, among us. All of this reminds me, I am in a bit of a hurry to get out of here. I'm so sorry to leave. You've all been so kind. And if I were you, I'd leave too, and pretty quickly. You don't want to be around when they hatch. What are you talking about, Bellows? Don't leave. There's no question of leaving. This is our home. 
the archipelago has been home to the barbarians ever since Great Hairy Bottom. The first barbarian of all got off his ship and sank into the bog right up to his thigh. He lost his boot on that occasion. They never found it again. And that was what that was really said. These are mortal words. There will be barbarians in the archipelago for as long as my boot is in that bog. They can't finish the story for he had heard it before. Yes, well, I know far, but at the time, Great Hairy Bottom didn't have 900,000 exterminator dragons about to fly down on the island and turn it into desert. I think that's a very good point. You've got to admit that is a very good point. That's not so many, roared Snow at the Vast, and there are only dragons after all. I mean, we shall stay and we shall fight. <laughs> I shall bring it up at the meeting of the thing. The thing is actually, this really was a real word. The thing is like a Viking council. It's like a council of war and it really was called the thing, which is a funny name for a council, but there we are. Um, which is in a week's time on Sunday, 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 so that we can prepare to join together and arm ourselves for the battle to come. Oh, how I wish your darling mother was with us now. Side stoic, Hikas mother, Valhalla Rama, was a truly magnificent warrior, but she was off questing again. My little muscly sweetheart would crush those extermi thingamies with one flick of her plaits, said stoic. We will fight them on the beaches, he yelled. We will fight them in the bracken. We will fight them in those boggy marshy bits that are so difficult to walk through without losing your shoes. We will never surrender. Good speech. And then he broke into a rousing rendition of Rule Barbaria, Barbaria rules the waves. And every single Stuligan stood up straight and proud, singing out the carrot chorus at the top of their lungs while performing the hooligan salute. For a nation that spent a lot of time fighting, burglaring and ransacking, the hooligans were a surprisingly musical lot. It was a shock to hear those ruffinly characters open their mouths and the proud words come ringing out pure and true, in perfect tune with each other, and in deep and gorgeous contrast to the scene of smoky devilish devastation going on behind them. The humongously hotshot got up to go. He stood, he shook, stoic, warmly by the hand. I must say, said Humongous, I think the clever th I think the clever thing to do would be with me to get out of here as fast as is humanly possible. But I have got to admire your suicidal bravery, mad and completely pointless as it is. Good luck, everybody. Won't you stay and fight with us? Pressed Stoic the Vast. A great hero like yourself would be a tremendous help. Well, I think now I'm more of an ex-hero, repeated Hermongus. I'm just a sword for hire. Nope. I've had it with lost causes. It's all about me, me, me from now on. <laughs> but I do have just one last thing to do before I shoot off as way, far away from this doomed off of as I can get. Could you possibly point me in the direction of the little island of Burke? Stoic the vast face broke into a broad grin. But my dear humongous, he explained, this is the Isle of Burke. Humongously hot shot's draw dropped. No, then you must be, you must be Chief Stoic the Vast, cried Stoic the Vast. Really? gasped Humongous, very politely, not asking the question. And do you always prance around the mountainside dressed only in knickers and in one blue sock? And this is your son? Humongous pointed at Hiccup. Hiccup, horrendous haddock the third, roared Stoic the Vast proudly. Humongous seemed to find this difficult to take in. I mean, this is shake up horrendous Alec the third. You might just turn to Stoke. You know, sir, I've changed my mind. I think I will hang around here for a while after all. Now that's a bit funny. Why did he change his mind? I wonder. He was so keen on leaving. Something odd is going on here. Wonderful boom, Stoic. I think you said your new profession was a sword for hire. That's right, said Humongous. Well, I've been looking, said Stoic thoughtfully, for a bodyguard for my son, Hiccup. You should be good at bodyguarding, having once been a hero. A bodyguard was a bodyguard for the heir to a white Viking chief. Like a hero, you were expected to be more 
than just a magnificent warrior. You had to be a total all-rounder, good-looking, musical, handy on the harp, and just as good with the spear as you were with the axe. And you had to be a great teacher as well, because you were supposed to be instructing the young heir in all of these skills. How's your weapon work? asked Stoic. For answer, Humongous drew his axe from his belt so quickly and so gracefully that Stoic didn't even see his hands move. He threw it sizzling through the air in such a way that it cut off one of Nob and Dobrin's plats and then boomerang back into Humongous's hand again, where he twiddled it twice round his wrist, balanced it for a moment on his elbow, and somersaulted it back into his belt again. The hooligans oohed with pleasure. There's nothing they enjoyed more than really some really good weapon work. Wow, gasped Stoic. This man was cooler than a cat twirling his whiskers on a freshly frozen iceberg. Oh, that was nothing, said Humongous. Oh, sighing, in my younger days I could have done that with my eyes shut. Don't try it, growled <laughs> Nob and no beans warningly. I don't presume you're as good with, with everything else, asked Stoic for answer. Humongous drew out his bow and arrow. You see that boy with the sculpted twos? Humongous pointed out it's not right. Oh, look at him. He, that's Humongous. He shot the hotshot, the hero. Look at him twiddling that axe as cool as a cat on an iceberg. Definitely a little bit in the middle age area. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Humongous pointed out Stoic, who was standing some distance away, chatting with Dog's Breath, the Durbrain, and picking his nose. Humongous let fly his arrow, and Stop fell, but not out, fell backwards with a short cry. My son! exclaimed Baggy Bang the Bayonet. Humongous held up a humongous yet elegant hand. There is absolutely no cause for alarm, my dear sir. I think you will find your son is completely unharmed. I have simply removed the booger from his nostril. It was so. It had all happened so quickly, so I just assumed he'd been strung by a wasp and went on talking to a uh, dog's dog breath, his nose boogie free. But that's impossible, stammered Stoic. Child's play, said Humongous, shaking its head. The boy's nostrils are the largest I have ever seen. And skiing, dragon riding, bushy ball skills, asked Stoic. Nothing to what they were in my prime, said Humongous sadly, but still tip top, a great first class. Us ex heroes don't do mediocre. <laughs> Is it just me, whispered Fishlegs, or is this guy really rather irritating? And harping, it asked Eric, I was just assuming with that magnificent waistline of yours that you can sing a splendiferous saga. Once there was a lady, sighed Humanga sadly, who claimed she would have died for my singing. Singing was my specialty, but no more. Fifteen years working in those jail forges, and my voice is completely broken. The gold dust crept into my lungs. Burned out my voice box, and worst of all, I've lost the will, the heart, the desire to do it. I will never sing again. That's a shame, said Stoic. I do love a nice sing song. Never mind. In every other way, you seem perfect for the job. Will you be my son's bodyguard? I will pay you handsomely. I accept the post with pleasure, said Humongous, immediately. I'm saving up to buy a little farm somewhere quiet and out of the way. Excellent, smiled Stoic the boss, and Stoic, huh? bustled off to call a meeting for the local tribes so he could form a war, war party to fight the exterminators. Will you teach me that flash thrust with twist thing that you did in the fire? asked Hiccup, looking delightedly up at Humongous. Of course, said his new bodyguard, who was busy sharpening his sword. Chapter 6 is tomorrow. I think there's something, well, not only should they be running away as fast as they should because of those exterminate 9,000, 900,000, oh my goodness. But also, I think there's something funny about this bodyguard. I don't know, but he seems a bit suspicious to me.